thankful to have each and every one of you here. Pray be some more coming on in. Uh, like for y'all remember Brother Curtis in your prayers. Um, he was in the hospital the other night. Um, they, he thought it might, might have been his heart. And did checks on him and everything. Said it was a muscle or something in his arm and everything. I think cramping or whatever. He's supposed to go to his main doctor this coming week and everything. So remember them in your prayers. And uh, remember Sister Charlotte. She's fighting this sign stuff. She's been having a rough couple of days and nights. So let's remember her in prayer. Any others? Gail wanted us to remember her and her mama. She was real sick with sore throat and stuff. Sister Joe? Never been, I think. Brother, I remember uh, Dustin Artis' dad, Buster Artis. Uh, I don't know if he, had, if he started his treatment. So I remember Brandon, him and a whole bunch of his friends got out yesterday playing football in the yard. He's hurting in his back and his shoulders. I remember him. Yeah, I remember days like that. Any others? I'd like to remember my son too. He's he's coming home next week, and Lord knows, you know, things that happen in them planes and all that's going on. But I'd like to remember his safety and also his family. His daughter Megan, you know, that had to see us, and they mm -hmm. took them off, and then they come back, and they're waiting now to see if they're going to grow anymore. <coughs> so I talked to her the other day was her birthday. She turned 18, and she said she wasn't a minor anymore. <laughs> <laughs> so I told her she was in my prayers, and she thanked me for it, and she don't know if she's going to go to Cheyenne, Wyoming, to college, or <coughs> she was wanting to, but she says, I don't know if I want to go back there. And I said, well, there's a college right here. I, that would be wonderful if God would just allow her to come up here somewhere to college. Yeah, that would be great. I know you'd enjoy it. I would. Any others? Any others? Look around, y'all. We got a lot of folks out. Don't know where they all at. Some of them working, like I said, we need to remember the ones working is Brother Freddy, Stephen, and Lee, and I don't know if anybody else is, but I know them three working today, so let's remember them. <coughs> remember all our children, grandchildren, great grandchildren, too, like I said, I have to put that great in there now. said you know they're they're in a situation now like I said you know if, uh, the Lord blessed them and, and they will like Sister Betty said you know for Johnny to have that retirement to fall back home but it's about gone you know and uh, they hadn't come through yet on his disability but I believe God's going to open up the door and I also remember our neighbor brother Haddock the one that was here Sunday night Oh, he's been on cloud nine. And I tell you what, he said God done something for him that night, mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, he said he feels like that God's uh, uh, he's supposed to be down here with us. So let's pray and then get on down and get in here with us and, and and just you know get closer to the Lord. Any others? I remember Mike. Um, he said Joel took Mike to Africa and everything. Mm -hmm. Might we? Mm -hmm. when, when that happen? Yes. Was he bad at breathing or what? He told Sheila he wasn't going, but I told him he had two big women hit him, so he got to show up. <laughs> well, we didn't lift him up, and he lift Sheila up too. Any others? Any other spoke about raising your hand? Let's all stand. Pray for this service this morning. Heavenly Father, as we come before you here this day, God, you see the needs, God. God, we ask, Lord, that you'll just move on their behalf. God, heal those that are sick in their bodies. 
God, encourage those, God, that are beat down, God. God, save the lost, God, and bless and encourage your children today, God. God, keep your hand of safety upon those, God, that are traveling back, God, our soldiers, God. Keep your hand upon their family. We pray for the peace of Israel today, God, that you be merciful, God. We pray for our leaders, God, that you'll be merciful to them, God. We pray much for this service, God, that you'll move. Touch Brother Herman and Sister Linda them as they're down there preaching today, God. We give you all the praise and all the glory. For we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Everybody sing, come on up, make the choir. Let's just sing to the glory of the Lord. Everybody can and everybody will. Come on up. I said.
bless the Lord back the Bible said. Brother Josh, if you would, how about praying over our tithes and offering, please? Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, we thank you for giving us another chance to come into your house, Father God, in this day. And Lord, thank you for blessing the gift and the giver and the ones who have not to give this day. In your name we pray. Amen. Start with, we're going to start with verse number 43. 
on chapter number 12. Then we're also going to read verses uh, 4 and 5 in chapter 13. Also that day they offered great sacrifices and rejoiced. For God had made them rejoice with great joy. The wives also and the children rejoiced. So that the joy, listen, so that the joy of Jerusalem was heard even afar off. And at that time were some appointed over the chambers of the treasuries. Treasures for the offering, for the first fruit, and for the tithe to gather to them of the fields of the cities the portions of the law for the priest and the Levites. For Judah rejoiced for the priest and for the Levites that waited. Both and both the seniors and the porters kept the ward of their God and the ward of the purifications according to the commandments. Of David and of Solomon his son. For in the days of David as Aspen of old, there were chiefs of singers and songs of praise and thanksgiving unto God. Now jump over to verse number 13. And before this, Elishib, the priest, having oversight of the chamber of the house of God was allied with Tobias and he had prepared for him a great chamber where aforetime they laid the meat offering, the frankincense and the vessels and the tithe of the corn, the new wine and the oil which was commanded to be given to the Levites and the singers and the porters and the officers of the priests. Fathers, I come before you here this morning as humbly as I know how. God, I ask, Lord, that you direct your servant this word this morning, that I may speak it with authority. Lord, that I may speak it with insight. God, that your children may understand, God, what you're speaking to us this day, and that we would heed this warning, God. And God, that we would examine ourselves, and we ask in the lovely name of Jesus, and the church said, you may be seated. If you're familiar with the book of Nehemiah, it is a book where that this young man, Nehemiah, was a captive taken from Jerusalem, taken back into Babylon, and there he became, became the cupbearer for the king. And Jerusalem was burnt down. There was nothing left but a few scattered people there. And this young man would always question everybody that came from there, how is it at Jerusalem? His heart was on the house of God and the things of God. And it broke his heart when they told him that the walls were torn down and the gates were burned. And the Bible said the first thing he did was he repented and he prayed and asked God to forgive not only his sin, but the sin of his fathers, which caused the destruction of Jerusalem. And because of this repentant heart and this broken and contrite spirit that Nehemiah had, God blessed him and he was able to find favor in the sight of the king. And the king gave him the paperwork that he needed to get all that was needed to rebuild Jerusalem. The walls, the temple of God, it was all rebuilt. During this time, though, they began to work on this wall and a man by the name of Sanbat and Tobias came and fought against them. Came and even discouraged, tried to discourage them. Said if a fox went up against this wall, he'd knock it down. And they fought against Nehemiah and the children of Israel so much so that the Bible said in one hand they held a two to work with in the other hand they held a sword but they completed the wall and they completed the, the building of the temple and, and they got it all back together and at the end of this I don't know how many years it took but it was several years 
probably 10, 15, maybe 20 years of working there, Sister Lois. But when they finally got it through, I read to you where it said, and they rejoiced. They rejoiced so much, the women, the children, the men, brother, uh, brother Wallen, that the Bible said the joy of Jerusalem was heard afar off. Everything was right with God and right with Jerusalem. God had blessed them. They had restored the temple. They had brought back in the singers. And they had the song to sing. They had brought back in the tithe, the giving. And everything was working great, Brother Chris. Then Nehemiah goes back to where he had to go to work with the king. He was gone for a space of probably two years or more. But when he comes back, he finds the joy is gone. He finds the singing's gone. There's no more praise going on. Something's wrong. Something's wrong. When he goes back and he begins to inquire, begins to look and find that it was the priest. It would have had to have been the high priest that was over all this to keep all this going, Brother Grid. He had made an alliance with the devil. Tobiah. The one that had come against him. Sister Jude had fought against getting Jerusalem built up. Listen what this priest did. The Bible said of all places he could have made him a, a house in Jerusalem somewhere. Could have made him a brand new house. But it said that he prepared for him a chamber and listen what chamber it was in the house of God. It was the chamber of the offerings and the sacrifice. It was the chamber of provision for God's singers and the musicians, the porters, the one who took care of the, the, the offerings. And something happened. The Bible said, if you read on down there, it said the Levites and the singers, they went back to working because they had no provision. And the song was going out of the church. There was no praise going on in the church. He said, brother, what does that mean to me? Where does the devil attack you? He attacks you in your praise. He attacks you in your praise. And I want to tell you, the Bible said that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. The Bible says that you are kings and high priests. What does the high priest do? And can we to offer up sacrifice and praise unto the Lord? And if the devil can steal your praise, if he can steal your soul, he'll destroy you. The Bible said that when Nehemiah left and everything was where it was supposed to be, John, there was joy in Jerusalem. Everybody was shouting and having a good time. The blessings of God were pouring in and everything was working. But when they stopped giving the sacrifice unto God, something happened in the church. I want to tell you something right now. You stop giving praise to God you stop giving the sacrifice of living before God, and you stop paying your tithe unto the Lord, your joy is soon to go. Right. And the Bible said the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's why there's so many weak people go Christians around because they have lost their joy. Amen. They, they don't have a praise in their heart. Does that mean they don't have battles? No. We still have battles. We still have trials. But we have God with us. We have the assurance. And he's going to bring us through it. And we trust in God. And we show our trust because I praise, Sister Lois. Sometimes I know it's hard to raise your hand. I thought about what Sister Allen did there. I want to tell y'all something right now. It may not have meant a lot to y'all, but in heaven there's rejoicing right now. I want to tell you right now, there's a lot of you here, you could have raised your hand and you could have shouted and praised the Lord, but you held your peace. But Sister Eileen knows where God brought her from. She knows that God went with her in that surgery and listen, God brought her out and she said she ain't been sold. Amen. And what did she do? could have been so easy for her just to sit there but thank God Sister Allie she said it from her heart I've got to say something yeah. I've got hold on preacher hold on preacher I've got to say something 
Brother Walsh, if we could ever get to that place in this church where we just praise God, amen, and we let God have his way. I want to tell you something. It'd be like the day when Solomon dedicated the temple of the Lord. The Bible said the Shekinah glory came down and filled that temple, and the priest couldn't do their work. His story tells us they were laid out in the Holy Ghost. Come on, somebody. That's right. Hallelujah. But what do we do, Aunt Cam? We come in, we hold our peace. And we know God's been good to us this week. We know God has blessed us, Sister Jewel, this week. He's come on the scene for us. But yet we'll come in, we'll hold our peace. Church, I want to tell you something. The Bible said, Jesus said, if they hold their peace, the rocks are going to cry out to me. I don't know about you, but I don't want no rock taking my place. I don't want no rock crying out to God, giving praise, and here I am. I'm a blessed man. Amen. I woke up this morning with a sound mind. I woke up this morning, I was able to dress myself. I woke up this morning, I was able to come to the house of the Lord. Amen. I want to tell you something. I'm blessed. Amen. And I need to give Him praise. But I want to tell you something. You need to take inventory this morning. Is Tobias in your heart? Has he crept in? Has it crept in? I'm going to tell you something. How good we'll shake it. When the joy of the Lord is in, as a verse I didn't read to you, it said, And all Israel in the days of Zerubbabel, and all in the days of Nehemiah, gave the portion of the singers and the porters every day his portion, and they sacrificed holy things to Levites, and the Levites sacrificed them unto the children of Aaron. When Tobaz ain't in your heart, come on somebody. When Tobaz ain't in your heart, you don't have a problem giving. Hello? Come on. You give joyful. The Bible said Jesus said what? He loves a cheerful giver. Amen. Have you ever wondered what that meant? When the joy of the Lord is in your heart, you just want to give people. Amen. You want to love them. Come on, somebody. Amen. It ain't all about money. That's right. Come on. Do we tithe on our time? Do we tithe on our love? Come on, somebody. A cheerful giver will. A cheerful giver, it said that they gave the portion gladly for the singers. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Did you get up this morning and you had to fight yourself to come to church? Or did you get up with joy in your heart and say, this is the day the Lord has made out here and rejoice and be glad in it. I got to get to his house. I got to get there and worship him. I got to get there and praise him. Why? Because he's been so good to me. Come on, somebody. Amen. Glory. Hallelujah. The chamber was purified. It was clean. Amen. And the worship of the Lord was everywhere. So much that everybody around heard. There's something going on in Jerusalem. <coughs> How many want that? How many want that when you walk around and say something's going on in them people? Amen. Come on, somebody. You can tell something going on in them people. They got the joy of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. You can feel something when you get around them. I want to tell you, I was down and out. But when they came by, I got lifted up. Come on, somebody. How many's ever went, and I know Brother Chris knows this from first hand experience. How many's ever went to visit the saint of God that was really on fire? And they were down and out. They were in the trouble. They were in sickness or whatever. And when you left there, you felt more encouraged. You went there to lift them up, and my God, they lifted you up. That's right. You went there, thought you were going to find them moaning and groaning, and they were just blessing God. They were glorifying God. Amen. Come on, somebody. You know what that was? That was the joy of the Lord. Amen. Because they sacrificed the praise. Amen. Think about old Joe when he's sitting on those ashes, Amen. scraping them swords, itching to death, tenant. But he said, I know my Redeemer liveth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. That's a sacrifice of praise. 
He's giving God glory. Everybody look at him. Are you crazy, man? God ain't blessed you. Look at you. You lost everything you got. Your health is gone. He said, but my Redeemer liveth. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I need to tell somebody who loves you. This morning, God sent this message to somebody here. Is the Tobaz in your heart? Has he got down there where that, that he's stirring up trouble? Listen, I'm going to tell you something. You quit giving praise to the Lord. You quit sacrificing toward the Lord. And the first thing that's going to happen is you're going to become a complainer. You're going to be one of those that find fault with people. You're going to be one of those that can't be satisfied no matter what's going on. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If you say you want a building white and they paint it white, say, well, I don't like that color white. Hello? When you got the Lord in your heart. And the joy of the Lord is in your heart. Right. Whatever comes your way, this is the day the Lord has made. I'm going to rejoice and be glad in Sister Lord. Preacher. Preacher, God's blessed you. Oh, Mm, preacher, God's heard your prayers. Come on, church, worship God. <laughs> if you can't feel God, just raise your hands a little bit. Come on, raise your hands and pray and see if you won't feel God here this morning. He's in his house this morning. Ah, <laughs> Preacher, God has restored your feet and your legs. Hallelujah, Jesus. Come on, church, ask the Holy Ghost to search your hearts this morning. Ask the Holy Ghost to search, is there anything in my heart? Is there anything that's not right with God? Show me this morning. Is there a Tobias in my heart? Has something moved in that's not right with God? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, have I stopped worshiping you? Have I stopped praising you, God? Come on, somebody. Holy Ghost is moving here this morning. God, he's searching your heart if you allow it this morning. If you say, God, is there anything, God, anything in me, God, that's stopping me, God, from being what you want me to be, God? Have I made an alliance with an enemy instead of you, God? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, 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 Oh,
Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jesus. Has this week been a week of praise? Or has this week been a week where you complain about everything and fall fight and found fault with everybody? Listen, God knows where you're at this morning. And don't think bad, but God loves you this morning. Amen. He said He chastens the ones He loves this morning. I'm going to tell you right now, some of the alliances that you're making are wrong. They're not right with God. Amen. Some of the things that you're participating in are not right with God. Amen. And God's saying this morning, get Tobias out of your heart. Get Tobias out of your heart. Amen. I need to use you. I want to use you. But I can't use you with Tobias in your heart because you're stopping the praise. You're stopping the moving of God. Oh, come on, church. The Bible said judgment must first begin at the house of God. I want to tell you right now, God sent this message. He gave it to me last night. Amen. Hallelujah. Tobaz, amen, has made an alliance. Amen. And he's moved into your heart. Amen. And he's causing you to, to do things that you know is wrong. You know it's wrong. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, God. God's speaking this morning. God speaking this morning. Come on, somebody. Somebody needs to be praying, God, search my heart. Search me, God. Is there anything, God, in my heart? Have I said things? Have I thought things, God? The contrary. Tobias stopped every bit of the praise in Jerusalem. When they moved they all over out, Brother Chris, they stopped giving, they stopped sacrificing, the singers stopped singing, the priests stopped going in and offering sacrifices. There was no more presence of God in Jerusalem. Friend, hear me this morning. Where are you at with God? Where are you at with God this morning? God knows and you know. You know whether or not there's a praise in your heart. You know whether or not if there's something that's not supposed to be in your heart. And if it is, you need to get to this altar this morning. And you need to say, God, forgive me. Or He wouldn't have sent this message this morning. It wasn't meant for you to get right. He's giving you an opportunity. Because I'm going to tell you what. This word this morning is just like Nehemiah when he came back. He said, when I realized what was going on, he said, I got angry. Hello, somebody. He said, I got angry. You know what he did? <laughs> he didn't ask either. He went and got the belongings of Tobias, his couch, his chair, his lazy boy, or whatever you want to call it, his 54 inch TV, whatever he wanted, and he threw it out. Amen. He didn't ask him, threw out his coat, threw out everything about him, and he called for the Levites and the porter. He said, Now purify this place. And the Bible said they went in and they purified it. They brought back the vessels of God. Children, don't you know this morning that you're the vessel of God? And when you align yourself with the devil and things of this world, you are fornicating with the vessel of God. Hello? Amen. Now that's pure and simple. But you're fornicating with the vessel of God. But the Bible said me and mine got mad. So you can have a holy madness. Come on, somebody. That's what needs wrong with the church world today. We need to get mad with the devil. Yes, and we need to pull down the strongholds of the enemy. The Bible said that Nehemiah threw everything that Tobaz had out there, and Tobaz too. Amen. And listen, you know what else he did? He, can? he got rid of that high priest. Because that high priest wasn't where he needed to be with God. Amen. And I want to tell you right now, you need to look at your life, your walk with God this morning. Ask yourself, am I being a high priest unto God? Or am I being a high priest unto the devil? 
church, you need to leave it alone. Amen. Hello? Come on, somebody. Amen. I've seen preachers take the divine word of God and cut up the sheep because they thought they <laughs> didn't like the way they <clears throat> looked or whatever. Friend, I'm going to tell you something right now. When you get that chamber cleaned out, Josh, there won't be nothing there but love. Love for God and love for His people. I'll tell you right now, God's speaking to somebody's heart here this morning. You say, how you know, preacher? Because He gave me the Word. And I feel the convicted power of the Holy Ghost right now. That's the best friend you've got right now. Amen. He said, oh, my brother there, you don't know how ashamed I feel. You better be glad you feel ashamed. Come on. For the Bible said you'll turn them over to a reprobate mind. They better leave a lie and they be damned. You'll sit right there and think, I'm all right. I'm all right. But if you're feeling conviction this morning, you better thank God you're feeling it. Come on. Come on. You better thank God you're feeling conviction this morning. Amen. That your heart had, your heart had got so hard that you just believe a lie and be damned. Amen. The thing about it is, though, Brother Wallace, we've got to get to the place where we realize that Tobias has it got into my chamber. I brought him in. James said, Brother Freddie Reddy, said, if you're drawn away, you're drawn away by your own lust and enticements. Amen. Hello? Amen. What happened? Tobias got in there. Tobias got in there. Come on. When Jesus is in there, Brother Chris, you can talk about no one you want. And I'm just going to love you and say, God, forgive me. But when Tobias is in there, I'm going to talk back about Chris. And I'm going to run Chris down. You know why? Because Tobias is in there. And Tobias likes to keep confusion going. And Tobias likes to stir up stuff. So I'm just letting him have his way. Well, I'm going to get over and I'm going to talk about little Sister Lois thing. You can tell me he's doing about it. I'm going to tell you something. When Jesus is in my heart, I must say, hey, let's pray for him. Yes. Let's meet him up. Come on, somebody. Yes. Amen. Too vast. Too vast. It's in the heart. In the heart chamber of the church of God. Jeremiah said, and I came to Jerusalem and understood of the evil that Elisha did for Tobias in preparing him a chamber in the courts of the house of God. The devil can't come in if you don't let him. I feel like right now we need to give the altar call. Musicians, make your way back up here. I could preach on and I might tonight. But I do know this. I do know this. God knew who was going to be here today. And friend, brothers and sisters in the Lord, listen to me. I've been out there where you're at. I've been out there in the pews. You need to thank God for the conviction that you feel. The Bible said all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Our problem is when we let that sin stay there, Sister Lord, we need to come and confess it, get it under the blood, and say, God, forgive me, Lord. Help me clean up my temple, Lord. That joy will flow through me, and I'll begin to praise you, God. Amen. I want to tell you something this morning. God sent this message for you. Don't try to push it off on nobody else. God sent this message for you. He's been missing you. He's been missing you because you see, Josh, in the time when the high priest would go off of the sacrifice, it was a special time. It was a time of fellowship between 
the man and God. God's been missing the fellowship you haven't been having with God. You've been letting other things get in your way, causing you to be pulled away from God. You've got to go here, you've got to go there, you've got to do this, you've got to do that. But God said, prepare a place for me. Prepare a place for me. You want the joy of the Lord? You want victory in your life? Prepare a place in your heart for God. Check your heart this morning. And you that are listening by Facebook, if you're here this morning and something's not right with you and God, Tobaz has entered into your heart. You can get right, right where you're at. You don't have to be in the church. He said, the day you seek me with all your heart, he said, that's the day I'll be found of you. And if you're in this condition, God's got this message for you. And church, I want you to be praying with me because this message is going around the world. We don't know, Sister Lord, where it's going. We don't know what the Holy Ghost was speaking to somebody when he was speaking with the tongues. That might have been a language of somebody. And they may have been hearing the message of God. So let's pray hard. Let's stand all over the building. Every head bowed and every eye closed. Father, I've done that what you told me to do. God, I've obeyed your voice. Now, Lord, it's up to your children, God, to move when you move upon them. Friend, please don't push this off. This is a very serious message this morning. For you see, if Tobias is in your heart, hell is your destination. Plain and simple. If Tobias is in your heart, hell is your destination. But if Jesus resides in your heart, the sweet Holy Ghost of God, heaven is waiting on you. You and you alone know where you're at this day. Come on. Come in,
thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you today. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you today, God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I thank you for my grandson. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for dealing with his heart this morning, God. God, draw Aaron closer to you than he's ever been, God. God, let him have a desire to serve you more than he ever has in his life. Open his eyes to the Word, God. Give him a hunger for the Word. God, as you used Aaron, God, in the Old Testament, use Aaron today, God. God, let him be that high priest, God, that will offer up sacrifices for his generation, for his youth, God, that are dying and headed to hell. Let him be that one that will be strong in the faith, God. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. but I'm glad I came to church today. Amen. Amen. I needed what God gave me this morning. 